What's up people, we're at the Sea Otter Downhill. Uh, it's Wednesday and I got here super early for no reason. So I thought I'd just give you guys a little bit of a course preview on the downhill course in the slalom. There's a handful of course changes to get into and the slalom is pretty interesting. So um, yeah, let's go check it out. I'll start into the first corner, pretty much the same. It's into the first straightaway. That's just a double. It's been a triple in the past into maybe the shallowest lip of all time. I mean, look at that thing. It's completely flat. I remember when this used to be a booter um, into the next jump. Now, this is the first big change coming out of this jump straight away. Now, this section is built way up into three big rollers. It used to be a tiny little roller here into a second one and you could gap into the corner. Um, and now everything is just way bigger and built out. That corner often causes some carnage, but right now it's looking pretty good. So yeah, this berm press is new. This always used to be a really sketchy little berm with a bunch of rocks that you had to like bunny hop over, but this is huge now. The dirt's pretty soft in here. It's not feeling like it's carrying a bunch of speed, so you're gonna have to yank to get over there. It's cool, but also just taking out like the th only three rocks on the track. So that berm press is up there. They did a big roller right here into this four roller section. This is actually pretty cool. This is probably my favorite change to the track. You could either go double, double, um, but I'm sure the fast guys will be doing some cool stuff through here. It's kind of a cool section. Makes this a little bit more interesting. And now we're into these two berms back to back after the pedal section up here. These are always tough because the fastest you hit these is in your race run after you sprinted that whole flat. So getting the braking point right for these is important. And if you watched last year's line breakdown, there's a cool little gap pump thing at the end of that corner right there. You can come out of this turn early and pump the backside. So hot tip. And then come out of that corner, get a good pump in here off the lip into the classic step down. So this section, believe it or not, seems even straighter than last year. They took something down this and benched it out evenly. So last year, if you watched the line breakdown video, I was saying people were getting to like this side or this side of the track and like really straightening it out. Well, it's completely straight now. And now that they've put a machine through here, the very center is the firmest part. So little detail like this, but even this straight away, there was like something going on that you had to think about, but now it's kind of just straight down the middle. But I don't want to sound like I'm complaining too bad. I know this place got a bunch of rain. So kind of a lot of this stuff, I think is just to deal with the moisture they had. And then over this blind crest into these two corners. And I gotta say, this is probably the loosest I've seen it. Some rain ruts to look out for there. Um, and then, yeah, look at all the loose marbles. White tire rider, let's see what he got. Ooh, that, that uh, maybe four out of 10. I'll give him this. Look at this crap. This has been loose in the past, but all these loose pebbles, that's kind of new. The rain must have like really washed all this crap into it. This is one of the more important couple corners on the course. It's really easy to stuff right here. But again, if you watched last year's line video, you'll know that you need to set up and kind of get in that pocket right back there. And then this corner is about the same. The entry, it seems like hasn't been touched and there's these loose pebbles I was talking about. They did put a lot of support at the end of this berm, which is nice because in the past, it's like just fallen off into nothingness is what I remember. So even though this is kind of sketchy and loose, at least you have something to turn on at the end. Um, and you could even like burn press out over that little lump. There have been a lot of different versions of this hip over the years, but this is a pretty good one. Lip here, landing, and they actually built up some support. Some years you land and you're like kind of off camber fighting to turn onto the road. So this one I think rides pretty good. I mean, you're pretty much no brakes after that last corner up there through these two left-handers and then like the rest of the course, I don't even know if you need to touch your brakes. All right, let's see if I can e-bike sprint to clearing this step up. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> big case, big case. Oh, this is gonna be good. No, that's not it. 
All right, if you're actually coming into that section with some speed, put in a few cranks. There is a soft spot at the bottom of the lip for that step up, but as long as you're cooking and you get that lip good, you can make it to this triple landing. All right, I don't need to explain it. We got local legend Alex Chamberlain here to show us how it's done. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Little case, but that's, that's more like it. whatever you do on that triple step up then you got a big roller to suck up before this little table thing and then it's into the speed zone this is the sickest part of the track in my opinion so it looks like you could either double or pump this it might not be worth doubling because they're pretty shallow and long but then here you can lift up watch out for this little soft spot but it looks like it's firming up all nice then you can double over here and then you're into this main step down um, where you just send it down the hill that's going to develop into a bit of a soft spot so like either going really long to the grass where it's firm or maybe sniping off to the side once that hole in the landing gets blown out and this section's kind of awkward i think you can like step onto this flat thing and gap over this dip right here um or try and pump this i don't know we'll have to figure that out stay tuned for the next couple videos where we suss this out on the bike and this whole section is just pump track xl again i think it's hard to see but these rollers are pretty significant through here so we'll see if it's quicker to double pump do some mixture of both and get up the speed got a bit of a step down and do a double new set of rollers and then a sprint to the finish even just taking a somewhat cruiser lap, that gets the heart rate up, let alone having to pedal the whole way down. Hopefully that was interesting. I'm gonna go head over to Solom and give you guys a preview of that. Oh, oh almost. That would've been pretty crazy. All right, what, uh, we made it to the top of dual slalom. Starts off sweet. Um, I think the start gate's in a bit of a different position this year. It used to be kind of more over to our right, but two rollers into a sweet set of berms and then five nice rollers. The last two are cornered, so I think this is gonna make it a little bit tech because you're gonna have to like turn and jump or be scrubbing, you know, there's gonna be a cornering element to the last two rollers, but honestly, after that, it gets a little sus. I, mean, I like solemn raw, but I don't know. There's like dirt clods and grass and like, you know, they could have weed whacked a little bit. I'll zoom in on my phone, but the first laps on this are going to be sketch. I mean, I'm not trying to diss it too hard. I know they had really tough conditions to deal with it. It was pretty wet out here. Um, but shoot, I mean, I, w I can't say I would be excited to ride that like I'm not racing slalom this year because I'm not trying to spend however many dollars just to get smoked. But uh, yeah, this doesn't make me regret that decision at all. So here's the controversial section. You can see there's wood. And the first take is that's freaking whack. I went and walked it earlier and it's super soft under it. Like the ground moves under you and there's just nothing you can do with that dirt. Um, this place gets like really gnarly, soggy swampland when it rains a ton. So I think unfortunately the track just didn't dry out enough for it to uh, make it workable. But these berms are sweet and then it's super raw. Like I think it's going to make for some interesting racing, but not necessarily a track I look at and go, that's fun to ride. So I'll be happily sitting on the sidelines yelling at these people watching some carnage. And then after that, the classic flat corners um, that are actually super terrifying when you're going full pace so there'll be some good racing um, stay tuned for CR content uh, my main goal for the weekend is to buy a bike for a thousand dollars then race it in the pro downhill um, so we'll see how that goes I'll try and be updating you guys every day on the progress so tomorrow the goal is to walk around with a thousand bucks cash and see if we can pick up a rig <laughs> This is the way it says the sign. I don't understand. <laughs> but the stage two. 
Hey, where, where should we go? I don't understand where to go. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's closed for cars. But it's where it's the it's the pro enduro practice right now. It's this way. It says it right there. It says it says to stage two right here. Where, can we go off the off the road? Around. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, we ain't done yet. We got a bonus segment. Came from all the way over there for the Solemn course. Ran into, pits, ran into Teddy. Yeah. Enduro stage three, baby. Stage four, maybe. Oh, that was sick. <laughs> me and Dan, they hit me in my funny bone. <laughs>